Welcome to the treatment section for Demodex blepharitis. I'm Scott Schachter. I'm in private practice in Pismo Beach, California. Um, a little bit about my background. I've been treating uh, Demodex for about two and a half years now, and I want to give a quick shout out to Mario Gutierrez in San Antonio, a fellow vision source administrator who really got me started down this path. Um, it's become a big part of my practice, and uh, uh, hey, Mario, thanks for that. So, um, I'm going to assume at this point that you do want to treat the condition and, and there's some discussion as to whether or not you want to treat based on symptoms and I'll tell you that uh, if I see cylindrical dander, if I'm going to treat that patient, um, everybody really has Demodex to some degree. Everybody has Demodex to some degree and what if you're seeing signs, if you're seeing cylindrical dander, if you're seeing uh, greasy lashes, distension, lash loss, etc. You're going to want to treat that patient. It means that they have too much Demodex. There's an infestation. So it's worth treating. I treat them. Again, if they're cylindrical dander, if I'm going to treat, uh, I don't care if they have symptoms. I think if you treat sooner, uh, you're going to have a much better chance of success of managing this population, getting things under control. So um, I'm, I don't know, I don't want, want to call myself aggressive about it, but if I see it, I treat it and I follow it, and that's how it's going to be. Uh, in the past, this is something I overlooked, like a lot of us do, um, but, but I've, I've gotten much more aggressive, and again, the sooner you do it, the better outcome you're going to get. If you don't treat this, what's going to happen? Uh, Kathy Mastroda covered this a little bit in her video. Um, you're going to see inflammation, allergy, Again, lash loss. Remember that Demodex brevis lives in the meibomian gland, so likely you're going to see damage to the meibomian gland. Likely you're going to see dry eye and, uh, and the resulting inflammation from that. Folliculorum lives at the root of the lash, so that's why you're going to see misdirected lashes, weak or brittle lashes, or lash loss. Um, so, and, and in addition to that, I've seen cases that are pretty severe, and I guarantee you're going to see those too it becomes very, very difficult to treat them successfully to get the population under control. And I think it's important to, to explain to patients, we're not looking for eradication, we're looking for management or control, trying to limit uh, the signs and symptoms that you might see. So uh, be, be clear about that. We're not going to eradicate these mites. And, and remember that they can also be linked with uh, rosacea. There's a strong link there. Um, and before you begin treatment, I strongly encourage you to take baseline photographs so you can monitor progress along the way. Um, current treatments, what's going on in the state of the state? What, what you'll see in most journals these days and what I used to do in the past is tell patients to do lid scrubs uh, with baby shampoo, um, do warm compresses, do that sort of hygiene. And while that's going to clear up the lashes and make them look a little bit better, it's not going to get to the source of the problem, which is the Demodex mite. So the newer treatments now are tea tree oil based. That's going to become, I believe, the new paradigm uh, is to get after them with tea tree oil. So what do I do for these patients? If they're mild, what I'm going to do with them typically is put them onto at-home lid wipes, commercially available tea tree oil lid wipes and what we use um, are Cleardex lid wipes. I believe it's currently the only commercially available uh, lid wipe. They look like this. They come in this little package just like that um, and we'll, we're, you're going to feel these uh, when you use them. So I think there's a few things you need to explain to patients. Um, you can either feel intense heat or intense cold, I think, and you need to encourage your patients to think intense cold. So what we'll do is kind of um, mash this around, and that's going to spread the tea tree oil out a little bit better, and we're going to put this on in the practice. We're going to have, my staff is going to show the patients how to use it and what it feels like so they don't get home and put this on and call you back mad that, that their eyes burning, their eyes on fire. So we, we do it right in the practice. So you'll just kind of mush it around and then open it and rub back and forth. You really want to do this with the eyes closed. Get to the base of the lashes. It's important to do that. Five or six times, flip it over, do the other side. Um, and uh, it, you can have the patients just kind of fan their eyes briefly. 
it should be within about 30 seconds to a minute, okay, to open up your eyes. And you may feel it a little bit, but it's tolerable. It's not that bad. And the more you use it, the better it gets. So they're going to use this either once or twice a day, and I'm going to check them back in a month if they're mild. Um, in, in moderate to severe cases, we take a different approach. And uh, what you really need to do is treat them in the office. Currently, what we're using is the Ocusoft Demodex kit, which is going to come with a little brush, like a paintbrush, and also a little vial of a tea tree oil mixture. So the way that works is the patient comes in, my staff is going to um, seat them in the exam room. They're going to take some Ocusoft lid, lid scrubs, the regular. We use these right here, the uh, Ocusoft uh, lid scrub plus, Ocusoft plus. We use that just to get the cylindrical dandruff off. So they'll kind of clean up the lashes. Then they're going to put in a drop of Tetravisc in each eye. Um, I'll go into the room and we'll take the Demodex kit and uh, dip the brush into the tea tree oil mixture and I'll paint the, at the base of the lashes. Be careful to get right at the base of the lashes. Uh, back and forth again about five or six times um, on the upper lid then the lower lid then go to the other eye. And you're going to have these patients close their eyes and keep them closed for about 10 minutes. And this is how I do it. Uh, Ocusoft might tell you different, but this is what we're doing. Uh, so we'll paint the lashes uh, and then just instruct the patients, close your eyes, relax here for about 10 minutes. A lot of them will bring in their own music. They'll bring in uh, an iPhone or iPod or whatever, and they'll just tune out for 10 minutes. And that, and that is a good way to kill that time. Uh, so 10 minutes later, I'll go back in and I'm going to repeat that. I'm just going to dip the brush back in there again, do it one more time, close your eyes for another 10 minutes. At that point, my staff is going to come in and they're going to irrigate the patient thoroughly. Uh, it's important to note, too, you want to make sure you're not hitting the cornea with this. If you're using a uh, cotton bud or you're using this brush, make sure that you're not hitting the cornea. You can cause abrasions. Getting a little tea tree oil on the surface of the eye won't be too bad, especially because you're going to rinse it. But an abrasion, uh, I think a lot of us have had this happen once and we kind of learned how to not have it happen again. Patients aren't happy about that. But mostly when they leave, they feel pretty good. You, again, you want to set expectations. Depending on severity, I tell patients it's going to take at least three weekly treatments, sometimes more. Uh, that's why we try to get to them early because it can take, I've had it take uh, maybe up to 10 times to really kind of get the, the signs under control. Um, and again, the goal is to decrease the population, not eradication. Um, some other things that you need to be aware of. Uh, patients, when they go home, they need to, they have some homework to do. They need to clean their sheets on high dryer setting. They need to toss their makeup. You need to encourage them to bring their other family members in. The eggs are airborne. They can live in bedding and makeup, et cetera. They're easily transmitted, and that's why we see so much Demodex. So be sure to take a look at family members as well. Um, some uh, of my colleagues that have been involved in this are recommending tea tree oil shampoo as well. Uh, these mites don't live on your head, but they do live on the lashes, sometimes on the eyebrows, they'll live on your cheeks and around your ear and around the base of your nose. So you can uh, encourage them to, to clean up that part of their eye. Maybe you want to use tea tree oil soap on their face as well. Maybe that will help. But you can use the lid wipes or these lid scrubs to accomplish that same thing. Um, what else I wanted to mention, there's some other treatments that are out there on the horizon. Uh, topical ivermectin is one that we're looking at, seeing whether or not uh, we can work with that. Manuka honey, uh, which has some antibacterial properties, is something that we're looking at as well. Uh, so I think that pretty much covers it. You, again, want to make sure you treat it early set expectations, educate your patients, demonstrate in the office what they're going to be doing, uh, follow them. I wanted to mention that as well. So as you follow these patients over time, there's no current protocols at this point. Um, we're trying to figure this out as we go. So I typically will check with patients about once a month if they're at the doing the at-home treatment and then try to reduce the frequency of the lid wipes based on what I'm seeing. Um, at this point, I'm not letting them go too much more than three months and just kind of following to see what happens as we taper this treatment. Uh, of course, with the in-office treatments, we're following them weekly, uh, sometimes even more, uh, to see what kind of progress we get. We ultimately try to manage with the lid wipes at home, 
and hopefully get to a point where they can just do regular lid hygiene uh, to maintain things. Uh, but it is important to follow these patients. Um, they're, you're going to find, as you treat these patients, their lids, their lashes, the surface of the eye, it's going to look a lot better. So it's pretty rewarding. You may not present, most likely these patients will not be coming in complaining about symptoms of blepharitis, but it's a secondary finding. And I want to point out, look at kids as well. I see a lot in pediatric cases. So uh, um, it's, it's a big practice builder, and it really is going to set you apart. Uh, you can be one of the first to actually be going out and treating this something different. Um, so uh, I guess in conclusion, you know what you need to do, so just go get them. That's it.